Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson, and we are uh, Unit uh, G.5 Congruent Triangles. This is concept video uh, 4. Point, or 5.4 and 5.5. So we're going to look at concept 4, which is isosceles triangle information, and concept 5, which is corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So if you take a look at your student learning map, you'll see those two concept blocks there and the I can statements that go along with them. At the end of this video, you should have a pretty good confidence of those I can statements. Anything that you couldn't do at the end of the video, please bring to my attention in class, and then we can go over it. Let's get started. Okay, I'm just going to review something very quickly with you um, with uh, triangles. And so here's a triangle, um, we'll call it A, B, and C. And we've talked about this in class, being able to order the sides in reference to the angles. So, you know, certainly 90 is the largest, so uh, B, C is the biggest, right? And so if we're, let's say we're going largest to smallest. Now, when we get to the other ones, we'll see that there's kind of a tie for those angles. And what that would imply is that AC's measure, whoops, AC's measure is the same as, uh, let's see, AC's measure is the same as AB's measure, okay? In other words, AC, the segment, is congruent to AB. If their measures are the same, then they're congruent. So what I would tell you is this, and I think you already know this, if these two angles are the same, and the sides opposite them are the same. And that gives me permission to come in and mark them congruent. And that's going to be the big thought that we're going to cover here in just a second. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, triangle isosceles, um, uh, the isosceles triangle theorem. And basically, if you take a look at this picture, um, and you should have this in your vocabulary words, in an isosceles triangle, these um, the sides that are congruent are called legs. Okay, the side that's not congruent to the other ones is called the base. Now this has nothing to do with how it's sitting in the triangle. Certainly if I had a triangle like this, this side here would be called the base, okay? All right, so in case we have um, some vocabulary words here in the triangle, we have the legs, we have the base angles. The base angles are across opposite the, um, the legs. And so um, there we have it, right? Easy enough. All right, let's take a look at um, the base angle theorem basically says this. If, um, if uh, the two legs are, if we identify in a triangle two legs that are congruent, in other words, it's isosceles, then the angles opposite them are congruent as well. Okay, that's the um, isosceles triangle theorem. All right, let's take a look at this uh, example down at the bottom. We have PQR. And uh, we have those two angles. Now, I can identify this side right here, which is RQ. That RQ is the base side because it's not the congruent side. The reason I know it's not the congruent side is because across from these angles are the congruent sides. Okay, so the base angles are angle, um, whoops, angle um, P, R, Q and angle R, Q, P. Now, for just notation-wise, since um, there's only one angle at all those corners, we really could just say angle R and angle Q, okay? If you're not sure what that means, just back up and see if you can analyze that. All right, here's formally the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, so suppose I have an isosceles triangle. So if triangle's isosceles triangle, then I get to conclude that the base angles are congruent. Okay, and of course we kind of did that right at the very beginning of the video using some previous knowledge with ordering the angles with the sides. That makes sense to me. Basically we get to conclude that the angles opposite those congruent sides are congruent. All right, let's take a look at the problem on the the right or the left hand side. So um, I'm going you can put me on pause if you want to draw it down, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work this problem with you, and uh, just show you how I would do it. Okay. So first of all, they tell me AB is 8.5. So let's go ahead and put that into the drawing. I got that side is 85, 8.5 centimeters, inches, whatever it is. That's asking me for this side, what that would be. Now, I know that since these angles are congruent, the sides opposite them have to be congruent. Cool, that's an easy problem. I know AC must be 
8.5. All right, hopefully that made total sense to you. All right, let's take a look at this problem. See if you can put me on pause and identify what um, the value of x would be, that angle. Now, we have the sides are congruent, so we should be able to identify what angles are congruent, add that information in, and so on. Put me on pause and see if you can do this one on your own, and then come back and check your work. All right, so I'm going to circle that that side's congruent to each other, so their angles opposite them are congruent. So this is why I know this angle down here has to be 75 degrees, okay? So now using the triangle sum theorem, I know that if those two angles are 75, then certainly 75 plus 75 plus the x has to equal 180 degrees. And that leaves me x to be 30 degrees once I do the math on that, okay? All right, let's go on. All right, well, here's one that has an x and a y in it. A little bit more challenging, but no problem. See if you can do this one on your own. All right, so I know that those two angles are the same, but they're different letters. So if I can find one, I can find the other, right? Well, if one is x, this is how I would think. If that one's x, I could certainly, for the time being, call that one x. So two of those x's plus the 40 should equal 180. So I just simply solve for that x, and I get x equals 70. Okay, so if x is 70, then certainly y would be 70. Those two angles are the same. Okay, if that went a little bit too fast for you, certainly put me on pause and go back, listen to it again, think that through on your own. All right, here's one. So I see unknown, so I'm going to have to write an equation. So um, some students would take those three expressions and add them up and equal 180 degrees, and that would be wrong. That's because these are segments, not angles, right? So um, if I knew what the perimeter was, then I could add that piece to that piece to that piece and make it equal to whatever the perimeter is, but I don't know that. What I do know is those angles are congruent, so the sides opposite them are congruent. So what I should do first is mark them congruent, okay? Now, is there enough information to write an equation? Some students find it um, a little bit confusing and hard to realize that sometimes we can write equations that don't use all the information. So I just know that those two pieces are congruent. So let's go ahead and write an equation that the two pieces are congruent. Once we do that, we can certainly solve for that x, and we get x is equal to 4. Okay. Now if I asked you to find the length of the sides, then I simply plug it in and, and so on. All right, take a look at this one and see if you can figure out what angle C is. A little bit um, thought-provoking. You might have to think about it a little bit. We have a Y here, so I can't use the triangle sum theorem because if we, if we did, we'd add all three of those pieces up and make it equal to 180. The problem is I would have X's and Y's in the same equation, and that doesn't work. So see if you can use some information that we've dealt with in this video already to maybe mark some things congruent and then write an equation. Come back and check your work. Okay, since those two sides are congruent, that means that those two angles are congruent. So I get to mark them congruent. And if the angles are congruent, then their measures are equal. And I can simply solve that, right? There's x equals 10. Now, since it asked me to find an angle, I should have probably wrote in plug in as a reminder not to accept 10 equals x as an answer. I need to plug it back in for angle A, or angle C. So let's just do a little work here. Angle C, angle C, let's see the measure of angle C is equal to 3x plus 2. And let's see, 3 times 10 plus 2, and that gives me 32 degrees. Easy as anything. Okay, very good. Let's downsize that and put it in that spot. All right, now I'm going to switch gears and go into 4.5. And this is a really pretty easy concept if you just follow me and pay attention. So this thing's called the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's kind of fun to say it. And so the letters that we'll use to represent this idea is C, P, C, T, C. So there's a, you know, three C's in here. There's just every other letter. And then the P 
and the T, right? The cool thing is that they all rhyme, P and T and C. So you're just going to need to remember this, but this represents these words up here. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, okay? So what this is talking about is this. Suppose you take a look over here to the right and you see these two triangles, okay? Now, if I was told that these two triangles were congruent, then they have corresponding parts that are congruent, okay? What I mean is, if you look over here to angle A, if these two triangles are congruent, there must be an angle over on the other side that's exactly that same, and there it is, D. And for this side, there's some side, let's say this length is 10, there must be a side over here that has a length of 10, and there it would be because that means that those two are congruent, okay? And that angle has a matching angle. So if these two triangles are congruent, then this is true. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And this is how we mark those triangles. So the way I do it first is I grab a side and I mark it with a single, then another side double, and so triple. Then I come over here and I mark the corresponding parts exactly the same. So BC corresponds to FE in this case. So I mark it single, double, and then triple. Once I do the sides, then the angles become really quite easy. But it's really important that we mark them in the right spot. Notice this angle right here, which is A, has a single mark. It's trapped between the double and the triple. So if we come over here to the double and the triple, it creates that angle. So I'd mark it with angle D's or angle A's mark. Same is true with angle C. It's between the single and the triple. So we come over here to the single and the triple, and it's right in between there, and so on. Now here's another way. Once you mark your sides, then the angle opposite that single mark, you can mark single strike on the angle like I have here. So when you come over here and you get the single struck, you can just look across and mark it with a single struck. I think that's much easier. So I see the triple struck side that I put on here. Remember, I came in first and went one, two, and three on here. So then when I went to, to match up the corresponding angle, all I do is look at this side and mark this angle with three strikes like I have here. Then I come over here and find that same side. And I can mark the angle. That's a much easier way, I think, to do it. Okay, so if these two triangles are congruent, then we need to come up with what we call a congruent statement. Now I'm going to ask you to do this on your um, on your do it problems. So this is called a congruent statement. Whoops, congruence. Whoops, statement. Sorry for the statement. Cool. So I have triangle ABC. So watch my my writing here, I start at A, I go to B, and then C, right? And so that represents the letters, the three letters in a specific order for the triangle, okay? Certainly triangle has a third side, but all I gotta do is list the three points for the triangle. Now over here is an identical triangle, it's congruent, and I need to be able to state what the name of that triangle is. It's very important that you put the letters over here in order not alphabetic order, but so that they match here. Say I went from A, B, C. Now this is very important that you catch this next concept for ease of doing this on your own. I went from the single struck angle to the triple struck angle to the, uh, uh, to the double struck. So I need to do that same path over here to do the letters, okay? So I'm gonna start at the single struck. I'm gonna change my color here. Start at the single struck, and then I went to the triple struck angle and then I went to the double struck angle. So that tells me the order in which I want to write my letters, D, E, and F. And if I did this correctly, watch this, this is very important, then angle A should be marked congruent to angle D. The first of each of those statements should be the same angle. So angle A and D should be the exact same angles, and that's a single struck, and that's a single struck. That's good. And that should happen with B, and C, okay? Now here's the standard in my class. When you go to write a congruent statement, this very first triangle that you write down must be in alphabetical order. Then 
when you go to write this one, you just make sure it matches up like we just did. It might, it may or may not be in alphabetical order. That's not the point. You need to make sure that the corresponding parts match up. Angle A matches to angle D and B with E and C with F. Okay, if you look over on the left-hand side, I have these two triangles are congruent, okay? So what I need you to do is I need you to go and, and mark up the two triangles so that their corresponding parts are marked congruent. So remember, I went and did the sides. Your order might not be my order, okay? So I don't want you to fret over your answer looking exactly like mine. But just go and mark, you know, the three sides, put a single strike, double strike, and triple strike in the... Um, in the, the right-hand drawing. Do that first, and then come back and check with me, okay? Write down the problem, and then put the three strikes on the sides, as I did in the previous problem. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna do it. You might have done differently, no big deal. So there's those three sides, okay? All right, now take a look. Angle A has to correspond to angle E. So angle A is across from the double struck, right? that angle right there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that with two strikes. Now, angle A has to match angle E. So let's do those two strikes. Okay. Go ahead and mark B and G congruent. Take a look at angle B. B is across from the three strikes. So now go ahead and mark over here the angle three strikes. Go ahead and do that on your own. I'm hoping that you marked it there. Okay, this is like art. And if you're not used to doing it or you just simply watch, you'll have a hard time. Angle C. Now, angle C is across from the single struck side, so I'll put a single strike there. And, of course, that leaves me F. Okay. So doing it this way allows me now to go back and strike the correct sides in the left hand or right hand side. So if you look at this angle right here, the single struck angle across from it is a single struck side. And these three, one, two, three, and then across from that one, one, two. Okay, so now I've correctly marked these two drawings to be congruent. This side FE is congruent to AC. And that's true if you look down here in the drawing. Okay, if you look down here in the drawing, let's say um, side AB, it should be marked congruent to side EG. A, B is right here, and E, G is right there, and it worked out, okay? So the, ultimately, the goal is, given a triangle and a statement like this, be able to mark it correctly, okay? If you don't like my method, come up with your other method, okay? All right. Let's look over to the right here, and we have um, a, a mark drawing showing that these two triangles are congruent. Now it says write the corresponding triangle or the uh, congruence triangle statement, okay? So the very first one we're gonna write is to the left, and we're gonna always write that in alphabetical order. So we're gonna start there. Now I want you to go ahead and finish it and make sure that you line up everything correctly, okay? So remember, it might, may or may not be in alphabetical order, but you want to look at angle A, angle B, and angle C and see which, which angles they correspond to and then just write them in the appropriate order here. Okay, so all I did is I looked at A, B, C in that order, right? So A started with the double struck. So when I went to write the letter over here, I should go to the double struck, which is G. Then B had the three strikes in the angle. So I went to K next, and I put a K there. So B and K correspond. And then C, which is the single struck, goes to D. And that's why I wrote that there. All right, simple stuff. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see this. Um, as you'll see that uh, the first two problems really are about today's lesson, and the last two problems are review questions, okay? So let me kind of zoom in, and I'll talk about them to help you possibly be a little bit more successful if you think you might struggle, if you listen. Okay, so the first one, we're just looking at um, using the isosceles triangle theorem there, okay? We did a problem like that in the video. Okay, and this next one, I give you a triangle statement a triangle uh, congruent statement here, and so I'm asking you to mark the drawing using given congruent statements, okay? So really struggle through that, don't give up, think through the process, and then I simply ask you to name the side that x, y is equal to, okay? All right, and then um, I'm going to change that real quick. All right, x, y is congruent to which side, okay? 
All right, and then we're going to do a review problem here. This is an exterior angle theorem problem right there. And you might have to use uh, some other processes to get the information. And then this problem here, which is the you know, using distance formula and possibly graphing it to, to write it up. All right, and that's it. Long video, 20 minutes. All right, so hopefully it went pretty smoothly for you. We'll see you next.